Hello everyone, Fluffy Cathy here. Before we begin, don't forget to comment and leave a like on the video. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button with your tongue. Now let's get on with the video of Cinderella Phenomenon. And hopefully my friend doesn't deserve me as it could be. Okay. Also, I forgot Kama's voice. So forgive me if I do. I'm sorry. Jurian, if you don't come at me like you truly mean to stab me, you'll never land a hit. Yes, ma'am. Um, yes, sir. It has been about two weeks since I first saw Karma here in the forest, practicing with Garland. I have come here every night since then, though I never stay as long as Karma, since I actually have to work to do since I actually have work to do in the morning. All right, here I come. Their two swords clash, and Karma laughs as he throws Jurian back and taps her lightly on the shoulder with his sword. That makes four hits, and that one was easy. Is that the best you can do, Jurian? I know that every time Karma practices with Jurian, he's in his miss. Karma decides. He says it is because of the curse and because he does not want Jurian to fall in love with him. Isn't he being over dramatic? I doubt someone like Jurian could fall in love with Karma. Catherine! Girl! What did we talk about? Friendship! Be subtle and quiet. Garland tells me that you're usually good at that. I am. Then why the exception today? Ah, uh, sir? Darling, it wouldn't happen to be because of the way I'm dressed, would it? Are you still not used to it? <gasps> Hit the nail on the head, have I? It is not very chivalrous to hurt a lady, of course, but the logic applies to men as well. An enemy is an enemy, Jurian, even if your enemy is a delicate flower like myself. Delicate flower. Jurian, you should hit him on the head for that. But Princess, he is not delicate at all. Jurian laughs and I scowl at her. Is she laughing at me? You and Karma seem to get along. I doubt it. Oh, Princess, you wound me. You always say that. You wound me where Jurian's blade cannot. Something flashes in Jurian's eye as she readies her swords again. Karma stands ready as Jurian rushes at him with her sword. Their swords clash again. I wonder. Karma, your back's open. <gasps> Karma turns. Jurian taps him on the shoulder and laughs aloud. I did it! A single hit! It looks like you have a weakness too, Karma. <laughs> Catherine, why? <laughs> no, it wasn't a weakness. It was the lack of sleep catching up with me. Why did he listen to me? He told Garland the other day that it was crucial to listen and watch the more important things. Alright, practice is over for now. I can see Garland coming for his practice. Karma walks to a corner to have a drink. I should probably head back to the tavern soon, but there is something I want to see first. On her way out, Jurian gives a solemn nod to Garland. She pauses to say something to him, and then looks at me, noticing my vague curiosity. I was just mentioning what a good swordsman Karma is. I have seen him fight with I have seen him fight, and Karma is a good swordsman. There's no doubt about it. Yet, is practicing with him really so special? He is fast on his feet, and quick with his reaction. He's an excellent person to train under. Even better than most of the commanders in the palace. I can second that. Even better than Ross, remember him? The first commander we trained under. The one that pushed slow learning with good exercise. 
about you always had to do more exercise than I did. Something about you being distracted. I was watching the way you swung your sword to make sure you didn't hurt yourself. Oh, does Garden like Jirian? Does he like her? Oh, he likes her. We're always been overprotective. Well, I... They both suddenly stopped to look at Karma, who is smiling slightly in on the side. Why does he have that look on his face? Well, that's a sign. We can't keep the commander waiting. Garland shakes his head, his expression snapping back into something more serious. Right! The two exchange quick farewells before Jurian waves and steps off of the clearing, leaving Garland with Karma. You're in a dress today. Are you two really so opposed oh, to hurting me when I'm in a dress? Or are you worried about ruining it? No. It's just so strange. You move so well, even in a long dress. But yes, Jirian didn't mention almost stepping on it once. Impossible! I am the picture of elegance! Of course. Karma shrugs Garland's comment off. The two ready their swords then get right into practice. Jurian has taken over Garland's patrol now so that Garland can get in some practice time. So Garland, have we told Jurian yet? <gasps> Even Karma knows! No. The conversation that Karma always has with Garland is the real reason I stay behind to watch them practice. I don't understand why Garden answers Karma's question if doing so makes him so depressed. Will you ever say anything to her, Garland? Da, da, da. Why don't you just confess to her already? Ah, Catherine! Karma lands an easy hit on Garland, who sighs in response. Whenever Garland thinks about Jury, he gets distracted. I do not understand his feelings at all, but seeing him remain quite frustrates me. Jirian is talented and poised. poised. I could never be good enough for her. You'll never win a woman's heart if you don't commit combat plan. Bleh. Bleh. You'll never win a woman's heart if you don't compliment her looks as well, Garland. Well, she's pretty too. Beautiful. And then there's me. Aren't they both knights? Haven't they been training together for a long time? Okay, I can understand why he won't tell her. Maybe he's scared. He doesn't want to ruin his relationship. But there's other ways you can tell a person that you like them, people. There are other ways. Just say something to her. Anything. Well, I... All you ever do is talk about her. Even Karma says their concentration is lacking because she is always on your mind. <gasps> so just tell her. If she does not like you back, then that's it. If she doesn't like me back? Confessions is our heart, Princess. Very tedious. You're only saying that because you're dramatic about everything. <laughs> the very nature of love is dramatic, darling. But enough idle t chatter, sir. Let us continue our training. I end up staying longer than I intended. By the time I consider returning to the tavern, Garland and Karma are wrapping up for the night. I have a question for Karma, so I wait until Garland leaves before I approach him. You're still here, Princess? Were you seeking out alone time with me by chance? I have enough of that every day when we run errands. I just have a question for you. You always come to the right person. What can I do for you, Princess Catherine? You... Oh, wait, I just realized right now that Catherine is spelled incorrectly. I'll be honest with you, when I did the playthrough, I did it really late at night, so I was like really sleep deprived. Ah, it's fine. 
You ask Garland the same question every time you train, and he always tells you that he cannot confess. Karma nods in acknowledgement, but his attention is on his sword. He inspects it carefully before sheathing it. It frustrates me. You're frustrated? That look of his always annoys me. Oh my, it is annoying. Did you want to ask me why he won't confess because you're so frustrated? Yes. I suppose after almost two months, I do know you a bit better. You do not know anything about me. And I do not know anything about karma either. Confessing isn't easy, dear Catherine. Surely you must realize that the possibility of rejection is a significant deteriorate. But if you never ask, you will never get an answer, and the stress of worrying strays with you and ruins everything. She has a point. Why are you staring at me? Is that the reason you're so blunt, princess? Blunt? You are far more blunt than I am. Princess Catherine, you truly are amazing. You're as sharp as a knight's blade. I am not amusing. Amusing? It is a matter of opinion, darling. He really is insufferable. And yet I still came to him for advice. The scariest part of a confession is the possibility of rejection. Can you imagine loving someone and then finding out that they don't feel the same way about you? My thoughts shift to the king. My chest tightens. Princess Catherine? Karma reaches out a hand to brush a strand of hair out of my face. I slap it away without realizing. He pulls his hand back with a gentle sigh. My apologies, princess. No, I cannot imagine. No? Loving someone and finding out that they do not feel the same way? I always knew my father never loved me. My understanding is different from what karma is referring to. Besides, I no longer hold any love in my heart for the king. I have already given up hope on him. Who hurt you, girl? Right? It is a good thing you have an experience of rejection love, princess. It is one of the worst feelings. Karma asked to be alone, so I returned to the cavern by myself that night. Okay. Okay, I can do this. I do not know why I agreed to this when nothing changes. Today, I am once again out in town with Karma, running errands. Since we've been partners, he insists on me coming with him every day. Why do you need a new dress? Because a lady needs all kinds of dresses in her closet. Variety is key when you want to make a good impression. I hate shopping. Period. Unless it's an art store, then, I, then I'm fine. Then I'm not fine. Hobby Lobby. I love that place. Just beautiful. Wait, wait, wait. All right. Uh, -huh. distracted. Why would you want to be? Why would you want to make a good impression on people in a disguise? A disguise is meant to conceal you. It does not exist to be flaunted. Oh no, darling. I only wear this disguise to stop the curse from working on people. It's not really meant to conceal anything but the fact that I am a man. Being doted on by a married woman or by a woman in love with another man is especially troubling. Is the curse really that powerful? Karma lays me over to the dress store and our conversation pauses when he goes to the store owner and to give specifications for a new dress. When we leave, Karma suggests going someplace to renew, reward me for all my hard work. You're treating me? Why wouldn't I, darling? You've been helping me for a while now. What 
is this healing gratitude. Karma does owe me for everything that I have done for him. So why do I feel like this? You know, it would be much easier for you to just help me by carrying bags. Oh there, let's buy one of those cupcakes. Karma cuts through my suggestion easily. Does he really dislike work so much that he'd rather pay me off for helping him? Maybe. Karma takes me to a stand showcasing all kinds of cupcakes. There are some with colored frosting, others with fancy decorations. Some are especially eye-catching, like a bright blue cupcake decorated with little stars. Ooh, that was pretty. Catch anything catch your eye? Anything catch your fancy ladies? All of them, actually. Alas, I do not think eating them all would be good for my diet. What do you think, Princess? We'll share one. I turn back to the cupcake, which I realize are big enough to share with between two people. Am I choosing one for myself, or one that Karma would like? I guess he is treating me, but... Two cupcakes catch my eyes. One has a tiny little creature sitting on top of the frosting. It seems to be a little lizard of sorts. Though it is strange, the color reminds me of Karma's dress. The other chocolate is decorated with little white chocolate pearls. Those pearls are small and somehow cute, but Karma might like the other cupcake. I'm going with the pearls! Who cares? I'll have that one. Princess, I didn't know you liked such cute things. 